All right, it says live. I gotta get the phone in the clamp. Oh, look at that, it's pointing at the head, just like a professional. Um, we'll tweak the camera a little bit if we need to. We'll tweak the lighting if we can. But welcome, good evening. It is Tuesday, it is nine o'clock central time, which means it's 10 o'clock eastern time, which means it's seven o'clock for all of our friends on the west coast. This is Jatai. This is Facebook Live. This is Razor Cutting Do's and Don'ts. Been looking forward to this program. You know, we've been doing these lives and I love doing them. We've been doing a little shaving. We've been doing a little take home product. I've been doing videos for the Jatai Academy website, J A T A I dot net on the web. If you're not a follower over there, you got to be a follower over there because I and all the other educators that do some work with the Jatai folks are constantly posting good stuff on that website. Camera's gonna get a little shaky for a minute here because I am going to raise it up just a little bit and the clamp wiggles and so, you know, be patient with me there. Uh, but I wanna give you the best shot at everything we're gonna see tonight. So, the program was billed as razor cutting do's and don'ts and I want to talk a little bit about razor cutting history. I want to talk a little bit about Jatai razor cutting tools. I got a mannequin here. We're going to do a whole bunch of razor cutting. Um, there's so much going on right now. You know, we're a week away, not even a week, we're days away from Cosmoprof North America, Las Vegas 2018. This is the dealer, manufacturer, buyer, seller show of the beauty industry of the year. Not really a stylist event. They have the Beacon program for students. They have the Naha Awards, North American Hairstyling Awards. If you're uh, nominated this year, good luck. Uh, but we all get together in Vegas to really get into all of uh, what's going on in the business, showing new products. Uh, a lot of people are ordering heavy for the last half of the year, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, Jatai, of course, is gonna be there. They're 35136, that's their booth number, 35136 is the Jatai booth number. So if you are gonna be at the show, if you are a beauty industry professional in some way and are gonna be attending that, great, stop by, we'd love to see you. You will find me at the show at Denman, 19117. 19117 is the Denman booth. I'm gonna be over there with my Denman friends. I know many of you have heard me talking and talking up the launch of Zoot Comb. Of course, since we're cutting hair, we're gonna be using our Zoot Comb. There are components of it that are specific to razor cutting, so we will share that and talk it up. But um, razor cutting, you know, um, let's go back to the beginning. When I've taught razor cutting classes in the past, I start with a little story about what I believe is literally the history of the beauty industry and absolutely the beginning of hair cutting the beginning of the beauty industry as we know it, even not as we know it, the beginning of razor cutting for sure, it's literally where our entire beauty universe began. And it's an old, old story. I'll start with that story. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about feather tools in particular. The Feather Freestyle Razor is without question the gold standard of the industry. And there's a number of reasons why. We'll talk about the blades, the variety of blades that they offer. We'll talk about the handles, how and why they're different. Uh, then we'll get into technique, plenty of that uh, down the road. So let's begin at the beginning. And the beginning is a long, long time ago. Um, depending on what you know of the origins of humans, um, and I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of reading about business. I do a lot of reading about a lot of stuff. Lately, I've been reading books on uh, paleoanthropology, which is the study of the skeletons of pre-human individuals, pre-human species and things like that. Just, I think it's cool stuff. But that's where our story literally begins, which is a long, long time ago. For all practical purposes, we're gonna call them cavemen. So two cavemen were out hunting. So this is at a time before agriculture and cavemen were out hunting with, with flint spears and knives and arrowheads and the things that cavemen hunt with. And they were having trouble hunting. They were having trouble spotting the animals out in the savanna or the jungle or the wilderness or wherever the cavemen lived, the forest, I don't know. And the reason they were having a problem was their hair was hanging in their eyes and they couldn't see where they were going, they couldn't see what was up. So they got an idea. 
One of the cavemen took a sharpened piece of flint, a stone that had been chipped away until the edges were sharp, and he scraped some hair off of the other caveman. Essentially, he was the first person to ever do a bang trim to get the hair out of the caveman's eyes. Well, the other caveman took the flint from the first caveman and he scraped the hair away, like a bang trim, out of the eyes of the first caveman. So they cut each other's hair and now they could see. And they were standing near a stream or a puddle or pool of water and they looked in the water to admire their bang trims. This is the first time a human has ever had a haircut. It had to begin somewhere and this is where it started. And they looked at their reflections in the pool and then they looked at each other and with whatever language skills they had, they decided that one of their hair looked better than the other. One of them did a better bang trim. Well, the one that did the better bang trim on the other caveman was the world's first cosmetologist. And that was his job going forward. They hunted together, but he was the hair cutter. He was the barber. He was the cosmetologist. Literally, that is where hair cutting begins, is with a sharpened edge used to scrape off hair. That was razor cutting. Literally the beginning of this. Now, fast forward a little bit, and you know, any sharpened edge can be used to cut hair. We all laugh when we see the YouTube videos with um, uh, people cutting hair with samurai swords. Somebody sent me the other day the video of the guy with the girl with her head on the chopping block and he's cutting hair with a hatchet with an ax. Well, that's just a sharpened edge. I've always said, if you know how to razor cut, you can get a long neck beer bottle, you can break it against the curb, and you can use a piece of the beer bottle to cut hair with. It's just another form of razor cutting. It's using a sharp edge to take away hair. So that's really the history of the business. That's where it started with cavemen wanting to hunt better using sharpened flint. Thank you, Feather Razor. Thank you, Jatai. We have better tools. Let's talk about the tools. Jatai offers three blades. And if you're familiar with the blades, that's a package of standard Jatai Feather Razor Blades. You open up the little package and the blades live in what is called a blade tray. They're sitting in the tray looking like that. Brrr, 10 in a row like that. Now, you've got your razor handle and you've got your razor disposal case. And Jatai features what you call the no touch system. The beauty of it is you take your razor and this is my standard freestyle razor handle with a standard blade, you can see that blade, that's got the built-in integral or integral guard. And the guard is what really set the feather folks apart with this design. Let's get rid of this old blade, dispose of them properly, you drop that into the blade disposal container, I've got my finger down on top of it, I'm gonna slide the handle to the side, the blade drops off and in, the blade is out of the handle. It's what they call the no-touch system. Then you simply go to your blade tray, you slide in, and you pick up and out your next fresh new blade. They're tight, they're snug, they fit great, they don't slip or slide, they don't rattle. They're totally safe, they're totally secure. And safety's a big piece of the Feather Jatai razor story because people didn't want a razor cut. We were afraid to razor cut. We didn't like to razor cut before about 1990 when this razor was introduced. Before that, it was all unguarded straight blades and band-aids and blood and horror, terrible things. Well, this opened up razor cutting to a whole new sector of the beauty industry. Now you gotta remember, in 1990, I'd been in the business say, a year and a half or so, I'm coming up on my 30th year, I never really cut much with a regular unguarded, you know, the hair shaper that they gave you in the beauty school kit. I never really cut with that much. I was gifted one of these, and we'll talk more about the first one that I got, because I have the original over here in the tool archive. I hope to share that with you in a little bit. Um, but the guard built into the blade as a unit to prevent you from cutting yourself or a client is part of the secret of the feather razor. The snug fit, the no rattle. With the guard built in, hair doesn't catch, jam, or pack in between the guard and the razor. You know those old hair shapers, you could slide the guard over the blade and hair got all stuck in it and it just wasn't really a viable option for us to use. So that's your freestyle razor with your standard blade, blades in the blade tray, 
um, and your disposal container for handling blades properly. Jatai has two additional blades, and I want to get them out here to show you. And I want to show you in their respective handles. So this will give us an opportunity to talk handles and to talk blades. Remember the black handle, they're color coded so you can tell. That's your freestyle razor with your traditional blade. I use the red handle for the texturizing blade and you'll notice the pattern of the guard. The guard serves to obscure half the blade. So when this blade is used through sections of hair, half the hair doesn't get cut. Half the hair gets cut. So it creates a random textured pattern through the hair and there's a variety of techniques we can use with that. We'll see those later. Lastly, I have what's called the detail handle. And you'll notice it is shorter than my black handle. It's also the yellow one. The yellow handle features what's called the R type. R stands for rapid cutting. What you'll notice there, and I'm gonna hold the R type up like that, and I'm gonna bring my freestyle up next to it. Black handle is freestyle regular blade. Yellow handle is R type blade. Look at the difference in the tooth configuration or the pattern of the bumps on the guard. Your rapid, your R-type blade has 40% more blade exposure. A lot more blade exposure. You've still got a guard, it's still safe and protected, but do you insert the blade opposite direction if you're a lefty? David Collins, the answer is yes. When you pull blades out of the blade tray, generally as a right-handed cutter, you'll take them straight away. I have seen many people who will Take the blade out, then we can slide them out of the handle, and I'll show you how we do that. If you take your blade, it's a great question, David, thank you for asking. I'll pull it out slightly, just enough like that that I can get a grip on it. I will take it out, I will reverse it, thereby putting the guard on the opposite side. Some folks will tell you they really see or feel no difference in cutting which side the guard is on. I've had some left-handed cutters that absolutely insist on flipping and, thanks Gary, uh, on flipping and flopping the blade. So if you're a lefty and you choose to do that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Just be careful when you do handle the blade. While Feather calls it the no-touch system, if you were paying attention, you will have noticed that I put a texture blade in my razor that I did not take out of a blade tray, that I took it out of a small container on the counter over there. That's called cheating, but you know, we're gonna do that from time to time. So I've got three handle styles to speak of this evening. I've got the black handle, which is my freestyle razor. I've got the red handle, lets me know right away that one's got my texture blade, and the short handle, the detail handle. Some people like it for working in tighter circumstances and situations around the head. Other people like it if they've got a smaller hand and the detail razor just fits better in it. Either way, all good, but I've got my three different feather blades on my razor. So now, we're ready to talk about why. And I'm gonna shift the camera here just a little bit because I wanna get to the board right there. Do they have a shaving blade, Bobby? The answer is yes, they do make incredible shaving blades. Those are different blades that go into different handles for face shaving, for neck cleanup, and things like that. They've got several, hey Rebecca, nice to see you. Uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. They've got um, shaving handles, quite a variety of them. Uh, I have some here on my station. I have what I use most of the time is the Japanese style handle. That's that guy right there. Uh, they also have, which is extremely popular in the cosmetology community, we talked about it on our last video. This is the Nathan Body Razor. Uh, it's called Detail Razor Handle if I'm looking to purchase. The Detail Razor, Jimmy uh, Colorado, the Detail Razor is the shorter handle. That was the yellow one. It's not a shading product. Again, it's a hair cutting. It's in the Feather Freestyle category, but the shorter handle is called a Detail Razor in marketing. And uh, you know, go to jatai.net on the web. You can shop through there uh, for all of the products that we're talking about tonight. Uh, but shaving handles are different. That said, I do want to make one comment though, because you asked. I know a lot of cosmetologists that do neck cleanups with a freestyle razor with a standard blade to clean up the neckline. They'll lather it up, 
They'll use a shave product that they offer for sale in their shop. I'm going to run off camera for just a minute here. Oops, dropped it. You heard me drop it if you're listening in the background there. Um, the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Set. We've talked about this on many of our videos in the past. Great example of a shaving product you can use for service delivery and you should also have, I just ran up front to the retail shelves, took that down off there. That's the three pack, facial cleanser, shave cream, and daily facial moisturizer. But I know professionals that use that on the neck, cleaning up the neck with their feather freestyle uh, hair cutting razor, not a shaving razor, but it does a better job than just a trimmer. Not as good a job as a shaving blade, but it really lets you create that luxury spa service, which lets you charge more for a haircut, which lets you make more money, which is why the Feather folks are helping you out with these products and services. I love this stuff. And don't forget, it's almost August 1st. July 1 was Raise Your Haircut Prices Day in the USA. Please comment, there's a few of you watching, comment if you raise your haircut price. I raised my haircut price July 1 here in the shop. You should have too. If you didn't, August 1st is like next Wednesday. It's not too late. You can still raise your haircut prices. But I want to go to the board here. Want to grab a marker. And I want to talk about why. Why do we want a razor cut in the first place? You know, we all have scissors. Anybody here have a scissors? Give me a thumbs up, give me a couple of hearts, give me a like, give me whatever you do to let me know if you got a scissors. Do you own a scissors? I own a scissors. Okay, do you own a clipper? Sure, you own a clipper. There's more than one way to cut hair. You probably own a blending scissors too. Why do we want a razor cut? Why razor cut at all? We can do it. Hot lather is where it's at. Yes, Gary, you're absolutely right. Uh, so as long as a cosmetologist, we can clean up the neck with our hair razor. The answer is yes. Linda, uh, is it Knudsen, Knudsen, uh, Knudsen? I, I don't know. Um, Linda, we're going to call you Linda. Um, the answer is yes. There, here in Illinois where I live, I'm from the great state of Illinois in, uh, outside of Chicago. I have a cos and a barber license, but with my cos license, I can use a feather freestyle hair cutting razor to clean up a neck because the guard falls within the letter of the law that allows me to do that. I believe that is the case in almost every state where you can't use a razor on skin with a cos and you need that barber license. The loophole is the feather razor. The freestyle hair cutting razor, or as many of you know, and I'm always a strong advocate for, that's the Japanese handle with the ProGuard blade. You see that wire wrapping on the blade? That's a form of a guard. Gary, 4420s. Why are you mentioning 4420s? Oh, you got 4420s? I got 4420s. Love my 4420. Uh, hey, Bobby, Evergreen Park. That's, that's part of the Chicago area. This is the nape and body blade. Also has an integral guard. These are neck legal for cause. Yes, 50 state on the neck because it's not a straight open blade. Let's get to the board. I keep delaying here. But it's good because you're asking questions and I'm here to answer. So the question is, I asked the question, now I'm going to answer the question, why do we razor cut at all? And here's the answer why. If you remember back to your Kaz textbook in the beginning of cosmetology school, in the beginning chapter of the Milady book, early on in the business, they talked about hair cutting and there was a doodle or a diagram and it looked like this. Those are hair shafts and they have a very solid blunt end on them. Your book might have referred to it as blunt cutting or club cutting. And I'm going to draw a little scissors because I'm an artist. I did all the artwork in all my books. On a scale of 1 to 10, scissor cutting is a 1. 1 being minimal texture, 10 being maximum texture. On a scale of 1 to 10, scissor cutting is a 1. Think Vidal Sassoon inspired bob. Heavy, swingy, dense, very little movement to it, lots of weight. Weighty haircuts equal scissors. Then there's clipper cutting. Clipper cutting looks like this. We talk about clipper cutting from the idea that while each and every hair is cut blunt, 
There's a staggered effect in the ends of the hair as a byproduct of the reciprocating action of the clipper blade. Wow, that was a mouthful. I'm gonna say it again. There's a staggered effect in the ends of the hair as a byproduct of the reciprocating action of the clipper blade. In English, the blade wiggles, the hair's broken up. The blade wiggles, the hair's broken up. So I'm gonna draw a little clipper over here to indicate clipper cutting. And on a scale of one to 10, if one is scissor cutting, minimal texture, a lot of weightiness, clipper cutting is about a three and a half, 3.5. While each and every hair is cut blunt, no two hairs fall to the same point. There's a staggered effect. Now, lastly, we have razor cutting. And the razor cutting diagram looked a little different. It looked like this. Take a look at those hair shafts. Instead of having the very heavy blunt end, uh, Troy, they can use a safety razor too. Yes, you can use a safety razor with a cause license for neck cleanup. You can use a BIC throwaway. I know some shops out there, they use a disposable BIC single blade cheapy throwaway. They buy them in bulk from a supply house, they can buy hundreds of them for nothing. They're like eight cents a piece or something. It doesn't look really professional, but you can do it. It doesn't present really professional in the shop, but you can do it. I say it's better than just using a trimmer on the neck. Totally, Troy, I'm with you, and I agree. It's just not necessarily the level of professional presentation that I think we're after when we're trying to shave a neckline for the purpose of trying to take more of somebody's money, which is not a bad thing. So, razor cutting. The razor comes in at a low, slow angle. It peels away the cuticle, exposing a large quantity of the cortex. It gives us a really movable, mobile, slitherly, tenderly end on the hair shaft. On a scale of one to 10, if scissor cutting's a one, and clipper cutting's about a three and a half, razor cutting is our 10. Right here, I'm gonna give it a number 10. Lots of movement, lots of activation, maximum going on in the hair, minimal weight, minimal heaviness. A lot of haircuts will benefit from being razor cut in the interest of, fill in, finish my sentence, go for it, in the interest of, in the interest of texture. Texture is what it's all about, texture. T-E-X-T-U-R-E. -E. And I think because the camera is reversed, that's probably spelled backwards. So wait, I can do it this way. I'm, I'm gonna be really proud of this if it works. T-E, the X is the same either way. So is the T, so is the U. Uh, the R is gonna be tricky. I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna think for a minute. All right, and now we got one more E. I got by with the first one, I'll get by with the second one. If I did that right, let me look at the camera. Look at that, it says texture. Simple things make me so happy. All right, so texture is what it's all about. It's the answer to the question, why would we use or even razor cut in the first place? So, you got the history of razor cutting. It started with cavemen using sharpened flint. You've got Jatai, you've got feather razor, you've got three different blades. You've got standard, you've got rapid cutting, and you've got texture. You've got three different handles, the black one, the red one, and the detail handle. They also make a folding handle if you're more of a traditionalist and like that folding style razor. I thought I brought it with me, but I don't see it in my stuff. I apologize for that, but they make a folding style handle. It's kind of a baby blue color. It's really a nice tool, especially if you like to hold and use a razor in a traditional handhold way. Uh, it folds more like a shaving razor. So um, I'm gonna move the camera back over here to the head. I'm gonna try to keep it close because my friends and fans from Jatai are always reminding me how important it is that we've gotta be able to see really well. You can texture with shears, you have to tip cut. Troy, you're absolutely right. Point cutting, what I would call that as opposed to tip cutting, the term you use, point cutting is a fabulous texture technique. You know what? So is slide cutting. There's so many more just like that. Um, that's another visit on another video where we share a host of different 
Scissor cutting techniques, love to do it, happy to spend the time with it. But today we're razor cutting. Uh, so we're gonna use razors to create that texture. You can slither with a clipper to create a razor effect with a clipper, but it's gonna be easier to do it with a razor because the razor is the tool we're after. So um, we're gonna get ready to do some cutting. Before I go there though, uh, I just wanna dip into the bag and share some oldies, some goodies and favorites from my collection. You know, I shared the current tools that I'm using, but I also want to share a couple special ones with you. Um, some of these are no longer available from Feather. Sometimes you can find them used. There are some newer razors and different colored handles and things. When you go buy Jatai Feather at a show, at a booth, they've got all kinds of cool stuff. I just love shopping for tools, razors, and things like that. But a couple things to share with you. This red one right here, you don't have this one and you won't see and you won't find this one. What you'll notice about this red one, compared to the red one I showed you earlier, I'm going to hold them up there. Notice the bottom one. The hole is smaller. This is how you know I've been using Feather Freestyle Razors since the beginning. The smaller hole was part of the first batch of Feather Razors imported into America from Japan in late 1989, 1990. I was told they only imported several dozen. And then they switched to a larger finger hole because our American fingers didn't fit in there really well. That may be the case, but I've always been a grabber anyways. I don't really put a finger in the hole. I just grab the handle and hold it like that. But this red one is kind of special, collectible to me because you just can't find them, you just can't get them. It's an original from the first batch ever imported into the country. Kind of cool. All right. Other ones I have here, this one's really cool. This was called a Feather Flex Handle Razor. And you'll notice the handle on that one is bent ergonomically. Well, the deal with this one was, and I have one like this, and I have one in a bluish, like a blue-gray kind of color, that this is a special plastic polymer that is sensitive to temperature. And what you did with these is, you would pour a cup of coffee. You would put the razor handle in a cup of coffee and you would leave it sit there for a minute and it would get all soft and squishy and wiggly. And then you would grab it with your hand like that, take it out and grab it with your hand and then hold your hand under the running cold water faucet and it would lock in place. So there was a time when they were offering these flex handles, and I have a few of them, when I would have two or three with a different bend for a different hand position for a different technique, and they were custom fitted to my hands. Way cool. Loved them back in the day. Still use it occasionally. That was a special one. This one was, and I cut so little hair with this. This is a feather freestyle razor that was a gold handle with a green soft rubber insert to it. It actually came in a really great leather holster type case. I've almost never cut hair with it. I was excited when I found it. I bought it, I paid a bunch of money for it uh, just to have it. So it's kind of a collectible to me, kind of special to me. Last one here was given to me as a gift. I've never seen it available for sale in America. Um, I've used it to cut hair quite a bit. It's got a little bit of a rubber grip on it. It's got a symmetrical ring. It's not offset one way or the other, but it's a double-headed razor. Check that out. I've got a standard freestyle blade in one side, and I've got a textured blade in the other. So with this, you could cut, flip it over, and texturize without having to go to a second handle. That one also came in that fancy leather case. So there's a history of some really neat handles and tools out there. Love my feather, love my jatai, love my freestyle razor. Um, these are collector's ones for me. I'm not cutting hair with those. Now I'm cutting hair. Took us a while to get here, but we're here. Let me get a drink, because I've been doing a lot of talking. We're half an hour in. Just like you got to oil a clipper, you got to oil me to keep me talking. And what a perfect segue, I'd like to say, I set it up to get into the conversation of hydration. When we are razor cutting, we want to keep the hair well hydrated, very damp, almost wet 
almost dripping as opposed to the damp air I like to use for clipper cutting or that some folks like, like to use for traditional scissor cutting. We want a much greater degree of hydration in the hair. So a client's gonna be shampooed and barely towel dry, leaving a great deal of that moisture in the hair. Now, while we're on the subject of moisture in the hair, of course it's time to talk about cutting products, cutting lotions. Feather, the tie has their blade glide. That's Blade Glide. That's a small compact bottle of Blade Glide. Blade Glide is a cutting lotion. We've used Blade Glide in other videos as a shaving product to put on the skin for slip and slide. You certainly can do that, but Blade Glide is a fabulous product to be added to the hair to enhance the slip and slide. You see the comb slides through it even easier when there's a little bit of Blade Glide applied to the hair. Cutting products, whether it be Blade Glide, some of you may be familiar with using leave-in. Can you move the camera down a little bit? The responses are in the way. The responses are in the way. Oh, other people can see the responses too. I thought that was just me. Yes, of course I can move the camera down a little bit. Let's lower the camera. A little bit of wiggling on the camera while I lowered here. I apologize for that, guys. Don't get seasick. You really don't need to see the ceiling. You really don't need to see my head. You really need to see the mannequin. So I totally got you here. Let's get that and let's move in close like that. Is that going to be better? Well, we're on a delay, so. All right. Okay. Um, we we're talking about products in the hair. Some of you may have cut in the past with lightweight spray on leave in conditioners. Obviously, that blade glide falls in that category. Some of us have cut in the past with lightweight cream type uh, conditioners, leave ins. Uh, some of us have put some of those cream leave in conditioners into our water bottled water. There are many different ways we can get that uh, product onto the hair for the purposes of. Uh, doing some of this razor cutting, but what you like and what you choose is up to you. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the Jatai, the Blade Glide. Um, so let's get into our techniques now. And, and by the way, the reasoning for product in the hair, several things. Number one, it keeps the hair damp. Moisture in the hair, product in the hair, keeps the moisture level even and consistent. Even and consistent dampness helps us maintain even and consistent tension and distribution, which all lead to uh, better hair cutting results. I've got my freestyle razor, I've got a fresh blade, and we're gonna break our techniques up, because we're getting into technique time now. We're gonna break our techniques up into different categories. The first category we're gonna look at is hanging length. When hair is hanging down, affected by gravity, and we are cutting in the lower portion of the head. For hanging length, and I'm going to be using my new Zoot comb. And what you'll notice is the Zoot comb on this side has both the wide and the other teeth, the uh, tighter teeth at the bottom. This is going to help us with tension distribution and control. I believe that when we razor cut, we should razor cut with wide tooth combs. Uh, fundamental principle of razor cutting as far as I'm concerned, I know there are folks out there that may not agree with that. There are some folks out there that teach razor cutting that traditionally use regular cutting combs with finer teeth. And I think some of it has to do with what your objective is and what you're trying to cut. Some of it has to do with maybe who taught you or where your education came from. But my philosophy with regards to razor cutting with wide tooth combs is simply this. If we're choosing to razor cut, we're looking for texture in the first place. If we're looking for texture, fine tooth combs are about tension, distribution, and control. If we're gaining the control of using the finer teeth, that is working against the notion of a razor in the interest of movement and activation. So you're sort of defeating your own purpose. Therefore, to me, it makes sense that if we're gonna cut with a razor, we're going to work with a wide tooth comb to let the hair lay and fall and go and do what it wants naturally in the interest of texture like we saw on the board. So, I've got three techniques for hanging length. The three techniques we're going to look at for cutting hanging length are first parallel from above. And as the name implies with parallel from above, I'm going to take sections of hair and I'm going to comb them down. I'm going to slide to the point where I wish to cut. 
I'm going to insert my razor parallel to my fingers, parallel to my intended design line, above my fingers. This is what we call tension side cutting. When I hold a section of hair in my fingers, I have the hair held under tension on this side. Think it's tight, twang, 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 like the string of a guitar. And I have the hair here loose and flopping. That's the non-tension side. So the question becomes with some of these techniques, am I going to be cutting on the tension side of the hair where the hair is held in under tension, or am I going to be cutting on the non-tension side? So for our first technique, and I'm going to shift just a little bit here, for our first technique, and I want to make sure you guys can see, we're going to be looking at parallel from above, which is going to be executed on the tension side of the hair. Let's take a look at that again. I'm going to comb the hair down, slide till the point at which I wish to cut is directly above or outside my fingers. Set the razor in and push through. And notice how smooth, how clean, and how easily the razor works through. That is a brand new blade with a guard, totally safe, but very sharp. I hold my blade parallel to my intended design line. I'm coming in above the section on the tension side. I've established a bit of a guide. And look at the line. I want to grab a towel because it's hard to see against the black cutting collar with the darker hair, but I'm going to insert the towel in there and I'm going to lay the hair down against that. I'm going to comb it with the fine side of my comb and I want you to look at the line that we got. Now, I think it was Troy mentioned earlier the notion of point cutting. You could point cut all day long until you're blue in the face and you're not going to get that degree of softness or texture in the ends of the hair. Right there, what you're seeing is the answer to the question, why do we want a razor cut? It's all about the texture, the movement, and the activation. So parallel from above is one of my razor cutting techniques. It keeps things nice and soft. I would drop down a subsequent section, and this becomes hair cutting 101. Create a guide, follow the guide, don't lose and don't cut the guide. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to bring down my next section of hair. I'm going to comb it down. All of my standard section rules remain intact and remain important, meaning my section should be large enough to be worthwhile, but I still need to be able to see my guide through it. I can see my guide through that section. Let's drop down a little bit on the other side here. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to comb this down. And the beautiful thing about this zoot comb is I've got fine teeth on one side, for nice clean partings, and then I can switch to the wide teeth on the other. I'm not putting the comb down, I'm not you know, messing around. It's pretty quick and simple to get this cut. Now I'm going to go to my wide teeth because I want to maintain low tension and easy distribution. I slide, I look for the guide parallel from above. I come in parallel from above. One of the common questions I get at a lot of razor cutting classes is, hey Ivan, how hard are you pushing? How much do you have to push on the razor to execute that hair cutting? I love that question and I love my answer. The answer is it's never about pressure, it's about position. It's not about pressure, it's about position. It's not a question of how hard are you going to push on the razor. It's a question of the angle of the razor relative to the section that you're cutting. Because, and I'm going to bring a guide section down. We're going to go to a second technique and I'll show you again to illustrate this difference between pressure and position. And notice the hair sliding and gliding real nicely. The blade glide in there is doing its job. I'm able to get good clean partings and sections. I'm going to drop down another section across here. I want to be able to get enough to make my point visually, but still conserve enough that we can get some good hair cutting going on here, and we can do a lot of techniques along the way through. Chin down, my friend. Play along with me if you would. So, the question was, it's not about pressure, it's about position. When I slide parallel from above, if I set my razor in place 90 degrees to the hair shaft, I can push on that, I can push really hard, and it's not going to cut. That's because I'm trying to use pressure. I'm not conscious of position. Conversely, watch what's going to happen now. I'm going to set the razor in at an angle. And I'm going to turn this. Hopefully, you'll be able to catch this angle. 
a little bit better in the camera. You know, as it, when we do this on a cell phone, the camera's mounted. I'm used to shooting with the camera moving in someone's hand. They're able to follow me a little bit. So I apologize if the angle on this isn't going to be exactly right. But I'm going to come in at an angle. Look at the angle of the razor blade. Not perpendicular to the hair shaft, but angled up. See the difference? See my hand rolling like that? Instead of being perpendicular to the hair shaft, I'm gonna angle the razor up like that. When we get at an angle like that, where the razor is more flush to the hair, even a dull blade will cut right through the hair very, very smoothly and very, very rapidly. So, we get a fresh comb. I got lots of zoot combs, I got a whole bucket full of them. If I drop one, I just grab another. That was parallel from above. Parallel from above gives us texture, but it keeps things fairly blunt. The next technique we're gonna look at is parallel from below. Parallel from below is gonna look like this. We're gonna take a section of hair. I'm gonna comb it down. All right. And I use my grippers to put the hair up and out of the way like that. If you need some grippers, clipperguy.com is the place to go to get yourself some hair grippers. Everybody loves their grippers. Um, gentle on the hair, sectioning and control. All right. JATAI.net on the web. If you're not a subscriber to Jatai Academy, make sure you're getting on there. Make sure you're getting the daily emails with all the videos and all the education. Parallel from below. You saw parallel from above, parallel from below. I slide my fingers till they're just beneath the guide. I set the razor in below. See how I did that? I came in below the section. Previously we were above the section. Now we're gonna come in below. So I'm feeling for my guy. I come in and I pull through. And look what I have there. Look at the remnant in my fingers. Look at the line. Look how clean that line looks. That almost looks like it's been scissor cut. And that's somewhat deceptive because I lock the hair in against my fingers. The hair on the head is sliding through the blade. I lock the hair in against my fingers. The hair on the head is sliding through the blade, but the hair in my fingers remains stationary. Therefore, the remnant in my hand appears to have that very blunt edge when in fact we're still building up wonderful softness through the line. So now we've seen two techniques. We saw parallel from above, par fingers parallel to design line, razor parallel to fingers. We saw parallel from below, fingers parallel to design line, razors parallel to fingers coming up underneath and through from the bottom. This haircut's gonna look great the day you cut it. It's gonna live great every day between now and the next haircut. It's an awesome technique. The last technique we're gonna do for hanging length, I'm gonna drop all this hair down and we still will have hair that extends beyond our guideline. Even with the black hair, the darker hair on the darker cutting collar, you can still see the guideline now. And notice, with all the hot air I'm putting out of my mouth, and all the, the, the lights and everything here in the room, the hair is still moist and well hydrated. The last technique we're gonna look at is perpendicular cutting. We had parallel from above, parallel from below, now we're gonna look at perpendicular. Perpendicular cutting looks like this. We're gonna come in, and we're gonna come in with the razor blade perpendicular to our intended design line, perpendicular to our fingers, and we're gonna come in sideways. Now what you'll notice here is, Perpendicular cannot be done at zero elevation. I've got to lift up because I've got to have room to get my razor in there. What that means is, if it cannot be done at zero elevation, perpendicular cutting is going to begin to introduce a degree of graduation. So now we've got both the texture that is a byproduct of the action of the razor blade combined with the graduation that is a result of the elevation necessary to clear the head, body, or shoulder. I snuck in a little parallel below there for those of you that are paying attention, for those of you that are watching. So we looked at perpendicular from above, perpendicular from below, and now we're finishing, or, or parallel from above, parallel from below, now we're finishing up with some perpendicular. And one point I do want to make about perpendicular is it is the technique that allows us to create radical texture by virtue of the degree of movement. Here's what I mean. If I wiggle the blade a little, 
I get very little activation in the ends of the hair. I'm trying to cut a more solid blunt line. But if I choose to move the blade a lot, notice the amount of blade action there, I'm gonna get a lot more broken mist in through that hair shaft as a result of that movement. So we've got a much softer look here than we would ever get with a pair of shears, whether blunt cut or scissor cut. And we've got three razor techniques in the bucket. I'm just coming across the front here. This should come together as a point, and I'm just gonna knock the point off to tie those two sides together. I so this is question. a one length cut with our three hanging length techniques. Um, this is not feeding through. Oh, oh, there's all kinds of stuff. No, no, no. Can you adjust cutting hair at apex helm straight up if you haven't? Can you adjust cutting hair at apex helm straight up if you haven't already? Heidi, thank you for asking that. I want to do, here, I cut a baseline. I'm working my way up the head. You're with me. You're just one step ahead of me. I like it. I cut our baseline. I'm going to go in and do some texture cutting, then I'm going to address layering. So yes, I'm going to be getting over the top of the head. I've got two, three layering techniques to share as well. So let's do this. Let's look at our list and let's look at some texture techniques. These are techniques where we're not removing length, but we're reducing bulk, we're creating texture, we're creating movement, we're creating activation within the hair. So let's look at a couple of them. The first one we're going to look at is a technique called slicing or slashing. And what this technique looks like is this. I'll clip some hair up out of the way, grab a gripper, grab a gripper, park some hair there. I'm gonna take a section of hair, I'm gonna hold it under tension, I'm gonna introduce the razor, and I wanna come in at an angle here so everybody can see. I'm gonna introduce the razor into these sections and I'm gonna slash down like this. Now, what's important to recognize here is the pitch, the angle of the razor. Watch, if I hold the hair under tension and I introduce the razor parallel to the hair and I slide up and down like this, I can do this all day long and nothing will cut. Okay, not a bad thing. All day long and nothing will cut. However, if I insert the razor and I tilt it at an angle, I tweak it at a slight angle, watch what's gonna happen. Now I'm taking hair out. Now I'm removing internal hair. I'm gonna create movement, I'm gonna create activation, I'm gonna reduce bulk and weight, I'm gonna create texture. So the control here, because it's always about how does a hair cutter execute control over something like this, the control is the degree of angle or pitch. If we are running close to parallel to the hair shaft, we're gonna take out very, very little. Conversely, if I pitch that razor at a radical angle, I can take out a lot of hair very, very rapidly. So that is our slashing technique. The next technique we're gonna look at, and this is one of my favorites to share, this is a technique, this is like the mic drop technique. This is a technique that when I share it at classes, number one, people wanna come up and try it on the mannequin. So anybody who's watching this video, you're obviously gonna run out and do this to your sister to make sure you get it. It looks like this. I'm gonna take sections of hair. This technique is called weaving. Think like you weave highlights with a tail comb. I'm gonna take a section of hair, I'm gonna comb it, and I'm gonna hold it out. I'm gonna take my razor, and I'm gonna turn it backwards so the blade is facing away, and I'm gonna weave my razor into my section like that. See how we did that? We weave the razor into the section. I'm gonna go to the wider teeth. There's the shallow teeth on the bottom for some control. I'm gonna weave my razor. And when I weave my razor like that, I can turn the razor up. And I, you can't see that. Um, let me switch sides here. I'm gonna shift. No, 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 I'm gonna shift. I'm gonna go to here. I'm gonna go to there, okay? I'm gonna take this section now you'll be able to see it. I'm going to weave my razor and I'm going to roll the razor up and I'm going to take hair out of the top portion of the weave. Now the other option of course is I can do that same exact thing. I can take a section. I can take a section. 
I can weave the razor through, and I can roll the razor down, and I can take hair out of the under portion of the weave. Either way, I'm weaving through, and of course, you as a hair cutter can control this. When you do your weaving, do you weave fine and tiny, or do you weave big and chunky? It's entirely up to you. Totally awesome way to control what you cut. Now I'm gonna throw one little monkey wrench in there, or one other variable, and that is, I am gonna suggest that especially when we get into these texture techniques, we switch to the texture blade. That's right, we switch to the texturizing blade for the texture techniques. So whether it would be a weaving technique like this, where we weave the razor through, now the fact that the notched pattern on the guard weaves out hair allows for even more creative effect in the texture we create. So that was slashing, that was weaving. What else do we have on our list for texture? You know what, in the interest of time, we're gonna skip more texture techniques and we're gonna go to layering over the top of the head because we had that question. So we've got three ways we cut the perimeter, which parallel from above, parallel from below, and, per and, and uh, parallel from above, parallel from below, and perpendicular. Now, and let me turn so that we get on camera really good, just like that. Now we're gonna look at our layering over the top of the head. When we layer over the top, don't hold the real clients by the nose. When we layer over the top of the head, I'm gonna go back to my traditional freestyle. You know what, let's bring in the third one. This time we're gonna to go to our detail handle with our R-type blade, 40% more blade exposure, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at our techniques. Our first technique is going to be our tension side cutting. So I'm gonna take a section over the top of the head, I'm gonna comb it up, I'm gonna slide my fingers to the point I wish to cut, underneath my fingers, not here like we would with scissors, but underneath here, it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna comb it up, I'm gonna to slide to my cutting point, I'm gonna set the razor in below, and pull through. Let's take a look at that again. I'm gonna take a section of hair, I'm going to comb it up, and this got cut, so we'll look for the guide there. I'm gonna fold it over and pull through. And you know what, this blade, I'm gonna get a fresh blade, because that blade, despite being the R-type blade, it's not cutting as beautifully as it should. So that must be a blade with a little bit of mileage on it. Sometimes we like to have blades that have a little bit of mileage on them for slow their cutting. And I'm gonna add some hydration here, because this is dried out as I've been talking and cutting. I'm gonna go back to my blade glide, get a little bit of blade glide on there. Now you'll see how much more nicely this cuts through. That was less than what I was hoping for there, but you know, we're on the fly here, live on the web. You don't know what's gonna happen. All right, let's take this top section. Let's segregate a piece of this top section just off the top of the head. I got that parted out and sectioned out and scaled out like I want it. I'm gonna comb it up. I'm gonna hold it up. I'm gonna slide to my cutting point. I'm gonna set my R-type razor in from below and pull through. Now we got a real nice cut off that. Okay, and there you can see where that was cut. I fold the hair over and I pull the razor through. This is layering over the top of the head on the tension side of the hair. Layering on the top of the head on the tension side of the hair. I pull that through. And just like when I was doing my parallel from below technique, when I cut this way, you will see the remnant in my finger looks very clean, but the hair puller slid through my fingers as I cut. The other technique we have is cutting on the non-tension side. You see our guide? It's gonna look like this. This is layering on the non-tension side. And if you'll notice, when we pull this up, you can see our guide, the longer hair is flipping and flopping there a bit, but I'm peeling that away, I'm cutting on the non-tension side of the hair as it's being held, where the hair is loose and flipping and flopping. Let's slow this down, because I'm doing it fairly rapidly, so that you can see the steps involved in doing this, so that when you attempt to replicate this technique, 
It's going to make sense. It's going to work for you. It's a three-step process. It is pinch the hair, twist the razor, and pull those ends away. It's pinch, twist, and pull. Let's turn this 90 degrees. Now we've got a guide to follow. I'm going to part that over, and we're going to go pinch, twist, and pull. Three-step process. I'm just combing the hair straight up. Can you see the guide? Is it clear and obvious what was my guide from my previously cut section? I hope so. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in. We're going to look for the guide. There it is. We stay south of the guide. If I slide all the way to the guide and the guide slips into my fingertips, you can't get near it with the razor. So we want to hang out a little bit south of it. I'm going to come in. There it is. I'm going to set my razor in. And I'm going to pop off those ends. Look how fun and easy that is. And look at that. You could point cut for a month. You could never achieve that degree of softness or texture. I'll get it up behind my shirt so you can see what's going on there. So now we'll hop back. We'll take the next section. We look for the previously cut section in our fingers to serve as our guide. And this is on the non-tension side of the hair over the top of the head. This is our layering technique. And I happen to have six or eight inches of hair on the client here, and I'm taking away quite a bit of hair. If this were a much shorter haircut, all of the same principles apply and hold true, I wouldn't change anything. So we're combing it up, we're holding it up, we're looking for the guide, and we're pinching that away. We've got about another five minutes left here. I want to introduce one more concept, and that is turning the razor. When we come in, when we are layering from above like this, looking for our guide, I can take my length away, look for my guide, and take my length away like we've been doing. And notice my fingers are parallel to my design line, and my razor is basically parallel to my fingers. I'm taking off that hair. Watch what happens when we do this. We stay further south. Let's get the last of that little piece off there. We stay further south, we turn the razor, and we come into the ends parallel. Now the razor is parallel to the hair shaft. What you'll notice is the hair is not getting any shorter. It's like deep point cutting though. We're really getting deep in and breaking up the ends a lot. So that's an example of where we can create an explosion of texture with our razor cutting techniques. We've covered a lot tonight. We talked about cavemen cutting hair with rocks. We talked about the graphics on the wall up there that represent the textures associated with the world of hair cutting from razors to clippers to scissors. We looked at length cutting. We looked at internal texture techniques. We looked at overhead layering. Let's see if there's any fresh comments or anything here. If I cycle up through here, I got a thumbs up from somebody. I got a bunch of people here. Hey, Sean, how you doing, buddy? Twin cuts uh, on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Good to see you here tonight, my friend. Hope you're doing good. Hope the shops are busy and everybody's doing well. Bring the camera Will this down. Will be available anywhere? Will this be available? Video be available? Yes! On the Jutai page right here on replay. As soon as we're done, when we click end, it takes a little while for it to process and then it's going to live on Facebook. You know, anything on the web lives forever. Just be careful what you post. This will be available to watch on replay over and over. Troy, thank you very much. I appreciate you asking questions. Linda, is there any type of hair you wouldn't want to do this on? You know what the answer is? If you're using good sharp blades, if the hair is wet, and if you're using good product to protect the hair like Blade Glide, uh, leave-in conditioners and things like that, um, no, there's no hair you can't really do this with. Obviously, your techniques will need to be adapted as hair gets from straight to wavy and wavy to curly and curly to kinky. Um, there's a whole other group of techniques for another night on much shorter hairstyles where we get into um, not necessarily guy length, that's gender specific and not appropriate, but on our much shorter haircuts. Aura, thank you, you're welcome. No worries, uh, happy to share. Did you see um, Jamie's question? Janie's question was what? Are you placing your thumb directly against the blade? Yeah, and that's a really important question. This is what's really cool about the feather razor with the built-in guard. And there's all kinds of folks out there who couldn't razor cut. because I know people who razor cut with an unguarded razor this way. I was using the 40% exposed uh, R-type. But here, here, yeah, it's pinch, twist. 
change the angle of the razor, and pop those ends off. Pinch, twist, and pull, but yeah, right up against the blade. Pinch, twist, and pull. Slow motion now. It's like this. We're gonna pinch, twist, and pull. I can't do slow motion, you know me. I'm Clipper Guy, three world records for this stuff. That's the 10 o'clock bell. I think Facebook caps us in an hour. They're probably gonna cut me off. J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web is the Jatai website, Jatai Academy. Sign up, subscribe, visit the website to learn more. Come back here, clipperguy.com, ivanzoot.com, zootcomb.com for your zoot combs. I'm going to Vegas for Cosmoprof. We'll see you again here later. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the program. Thank you to Jatai for hosting us and letting us do this. Watch it live, watch it on the replay. Go Razor Cut and have a great night. Bye-bye.